Hey there, if I seem moderately less energetic this video, that'd be because this is my third time recording this video. First time the audio corrupted, and second time I couldn't get the footage off of my camera. So if I seem, uh, tired this video, it's because I'm really hoping this is the last time I have to record this video. 606 days ago, I sat down and made probably the best video on YouTube, and this video here is the direct sequel to that. So if you haven't seen that one, go to that first, here's a link so you can properly appreciate my technical genius and nuanced humor in this video. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into what's different from last time because I can feel my audience retention slipping through my fingers. Everything. I've changed everything. Pretty much everything. The game you knew, garbage though it was, is gone. So, I'll break it down from the start. Biggest change by far is that the game is now in third person. The reason behind this being I couldn't achieve the style of free-flowing combat that I wanted to when locked into a first-person perspective. Also, melee combat in first person sucks, so there's that. But the upside of it being third person now is that I get to not only show off my super cool modeling skills, that part's not a joke, I'm genuinely very pleased with my models, and also my slick animations like stab, and, and walking, and walking but sped up, because I didn't feel like making a run cycle yet. Anyway, all this is tied to a character controller that I piecemealed together from like two different YouTube videos and some of my own black magic coding to make something somewhat usable. I say somewhat because at the moment you can only walk forwards, there's no strafing or backpedaling, and this wouldn't be too hard to code, but the issue is I'm very lazy. But realistically speaking, when's the last time you walked backwards or side to side in real life? Right? I'm just going for immersion. Anyway, ignoring that, the actual combat mechanics were pretty easy to replicate in third person like I had in first person, so that brings us back to the biggest problem that I'm going to face in this entire project, the enemy AI. And I know you guys, all 428 of you, are very sharp and I'm sure the smartest people the world has to offer. However, this can get a little complicated, so let me just... Mm. Let me just go grab something real quick. I'll be right back, right, right back. Don't, don't go anywhere. And I'm left-handed, so these actually have to move. Fun fact, being left-handed is also sometimes referred to as being Southpaw, hence the name of the channel, <laughs> Southpaw Development. It's quirky, get it? And you might be wondering why I don't have some slick graphics on the screen to show it off instead of doing it on a whiteboard that's maybe like a tenth of the screen, and that's because I'm bad at video editing. So anyway, that's the player. Now, first things first, what we have to get down is we need the enemy to attack the player. So, that's an enemy. The simplest thing I need to actually start testing a game is to have them approach the player and to start attacking them. Let's say you have enemy here and enemy here. When the enemy engages in combat, if these guys have not seen the player, they'll be alerted because a nearby ally is in combat. So they'll come over to assist in the fight. Now, what happens if you're, say, in the middle of an enemy base, and there's a million enemies around you? Well, I want all of them to approach the player like so, but if you have multiple enemies, this many enemies, attacking you all at the same time, you pretty much have no chance at survival because that's just getting overwhelmed. Flipping to a, a getting a new frame of animation from the slick thing. Also, I'm racing with the head of my marker, uh, so subscribe so that I can afford a actual eraser for my whiteboard and literally anything else. I, it's help. So let's say you're surrounded by enemies. I want some of the enemies to take turns bobbing and weaving in and out, attacking. But some of the enemies, while that's going on, will realize, okay, the player is engaged by a lot of enemies already. They're just gonna kinda orbit around the player until it's their turn to attack. That way, as long as you, the player, keep your button timings down correctly and keep your head about you, you can potentially fend off all of the enemies without getting 
overwhelmed. It's still a bad idea to take on multiple enemies because the more enemies there are, the more likely you are to mess up, and if you mess up, you're probably dead. But this makes it a little bit more fun. Realistically speaking, if you were surrounded by a bunch of people who wanted to kill you, you'd be dead. But this is a video game about, like, twisty ties, so I don't really need to be that realistic. So ultimately, the way the system is going to work is there's going to be a cluster of enemies that know that they are attacking the player, and they're going to take turns taking jabs at the player. The player can counter, the player can strike back, the player can do whatever the player wants because the player is you. If you're familiar with what I was basing this project on, Shadow of Mordor, or the Batman games, you'll have a pretty decent understanding of what I'm going for. Now normally, I would try the simplest approach for problems like this, and then as the project goes on, fight and overcome my own stupidity to improve the logic, putting layers and layers of new material over the old broken stuff instead of having a solid foundation, which is the method I have coined the American Public Schools approach. However, as I enter the autumn years of my life, I have grown, I am wiser, and in my newfound wisdom, I decide to take the professional, aka a boring, approach and actually plan out and future-proof how I do this. Now, what I would like to do is, instead of having each AI have its own governance, if you will, and needing to communicate with one another, which is taxing and expensive, I want one script that has nice organized lists to manage it and send out commands to the AI, and from there, they have some self-control. Small issue, in coding, if you want to make a list of something, specifically the same type of something, it needs to be the same type of something. If I want to have a list of enemy AI scripts, that needs to be the same script, even if I make multiple AIs, which is the goal. If I only had one type of enemy, combat, no matter how fun it would be, would get stale after a while. It would provide no real challenge, and it would turn into more of just a button masher than an actual fun combat game. Let me give you an example of something talking about. If you have a list of circles, it needs to be a list of only circles. You can't just shove a triangle into there. And now you might be thinking, well, if I want to have circles and triangles together in a list, why don't I just make a list of shapes? And you would be correct if you weren't so incredibly wrong. You can't just put unlike objects together in the same list. That is a tight mismatch, I think. But ultimately, you are correct. And the answer for this particular conundrum is polymorphism. Now, if you're familiar with this concept, you probably just started shaking in your boots. But if you're unfamiliar, Microsoft, who wrote the C language, or C sharp, I think, uh, I don't actually know. Microsoft, who I'm pretty sure wrote it, their own definition of polymorphism is, polymorphism is often referred to as the third pillar of object-oriented programming after encapsulation and inheritance. Polymorphism is a Greek word that means many shaped. Listen, if we get to Greek etymology within two sentences, I generally think we should abandon all hope. Unfortunately, this is exactly what we need. I talk as though this is going to be what kills me and the project and bring out the inevitable heat death of the universe. However, in C Sharp, it's really not that complicated. I just make one script and call it an AI base class. And when I make whatever new scripts, no matter what soldier I'm working on, if I wanted to have the same AI, I just tell it to inherit from that class, and as long as you give it the same functions and similar but not the same definitions, the definitions actually don't need to be the same. Basically, that's the solution. So I wrote an AI base class, I wrote a manager to keep track of the AI base classes, I wrote two AIs just to test that I could put both in the list, and I wrote a system for it to handle and receive functions. Now let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm an indie dev, which means just because I write the system doesn't mean the system is going to work until I make the stuff that actually makes the system work. So I make have to make the system do stuff. I can't just pass that off to other people. Now the enemy AI and its intricacies with the game manager and the player is enough to fill an entire video on its own, and it will. That's going to be the next video in the series. So subscribe. But, like I said, the first thing I want is right simple. They just want to approach the player and attack them. But I got a little sidetracked, because at the moment you can attack the enemies, you can deal damage, but when they die they just disappear, which is boring. If I kill somebody, I want proof. I, I could have phrased that differently. I'm gonna make them ragdoll, is what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna make the enemy bodies ragdoll. And that's fairly simple, just take a force and apply it to the enemy after they died, coming from the player's sword. 
And now let's try that on for size. Flawless. That's all I've got for this video. Sorry part two took uh, almost two years, but you see, I was busy doing things like uh, nothing. I know I said I'd like to do monthly videos, but obviously that's not happening, so look for the next one in July, if I'm being optimistic. But yeah, that's all. I really hope this recording worked, because I'm not doing this again. Goodbye.